So let's open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 28, and Romans 5, 17, and we are going to read it out loud together. Like we said, these scriptures are very strategic, um, showing the flow of God's plans and purpose in humanity, and how God restored man back to the former glory. One, two, go. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over, over every living thing that moves on the air. Hallelujah. Romans 5, 17. One, two, go. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, we thank you. Because everyone under the sound of my voice is in the season of reigning through Christ Jesus. Because Jesus paid the price 2,000 years ago, every hold of the devil in our lives are banished forever. We walk in the reality of this new life that we have in Christ Jesus. And Lord, I will pray for everyone under the sound of my voice as we receive your word this evening. Our hearts will be open so that we begin to walk in the fullness of the potential that we have in Christ Jesus. And the people of God will shout a big amen. amen. Please, you may take your seat in God's presence. So, we, before I go on, sorry, I almost forgot. Uh, somebody shared a testimony, and the testimony has to be, um, it, it, she doesn't want the name named. Um, last week, a teenager in this church was kidnapped. She was kidnapped, and she said she just found herself outside of Ibadan. And she found herself um, in the midst of people, apparently ritualists, that we're going to use that for ritual. So they were putting something on people's head. And when they put the something on head, the guy that put it on her head was very angry. Say, Bulleti, really? Where did you see this one? This one is not meant for this. <laughs> so it was very angry. And because of anger, what they could do, they could not use her. They flogged her, actually, which was the pain that she had. They flogged her and drove her out. And she was able to get to, this, to the town where she saw some people and give them the number of the family that called, and they had to go outside of town to bring her back. But to the glory of God, she's well and sound. She's well and sound. Can you somebody shout a big hallelujah to that? You are not meant for that kind of thing. You were not created for that kind of thing. You have been repositioned in the spirit realm. The things of the spirit are very real. Hallelujah. Please, you may take your seats. So we thank God for that great deliverance. Yeah. Well, she, well, she didn't do anything. They just said this one is not meant for this kind of thing. The idol will not accept somebody that is already consumed by the blood of Jesus. That is hierarchy in the spirit realm. If you believe that, can you shout a big amen? amen. So we started by saying that God created the heavens and the earth and created several things in the midst of the heavens and the earth. And God preserved the creation of humanity for the last. Uh, probably because man is the crown of the creation of God. And God did not just create man as his crown. God empowered man to be able to rule and have dominion in every sphere of his life. So when God created man, he blessed him and said, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish, over every creature, over every situation and circumstances. So in the garden... In the Genesis, before the fall of man, man had dominion, he had rulership, he had authority over all the animals, he had authority over situations and circumstances. Man was in the perfect state because he had the breath of God. The essence, the, that the breath, the life that made God who he is was inside of man. And man also received the blessing. The blessing is the spiritual entity that makes a man to do well on earth. That is a blessing. That is a su summary of the blessing. So man was walking in two, those two dimensions. He was doing well. However, man breached the protocol. The protocol of heaven is that once 
you have this life of God. And for you to continue in this life of God, you have to be subservient to God himself. God has to have authority over you. God's dominion must be established through you. If you want to have your own dominion, then you're on your own. Or you're... So man decided that he wanted to be on, on his own and sold out to the devil. Obeyed the devil. Ex the fruit, which was a symbol of the fact that man disobeyed God. And when man disobeyed God, what happened was that that authority, that essence, the life that made man to have rulership in every situation and circumstance was taken away from him. That was death in the spirit realm. Death is separation from the life of God. He died. He was separated from the life of God. So henceforth, man started doing things by his own ability and in his own capacity. So henceforth, the man, the body of man could accommodate sicknesses and diseases. Henceforth, the body of man could accommodate hatred. The soul of man could accommodate hatred. Henceforth, Cain could kill his brother because of jealousy. Henceforth, a man could go into school and buy a gun and begin to shoot people. Henceforth, a man could kidnap somebody and say, bring money. Henceforth, this story that we talk, somebody wants to use other human beings for ritual, came into being. Before then, it was not like that. In the beginning, it was not like that. Turn to your neighbor and say, in the beginning, it was not like that. Can you stand up and go and tell temple, just stop them. In the beginning, it was not like that. I was like, like church to be alive. In the beginning, it was not like that. In the beginning. So the version of man that you are seeing is not the original intent of God. In the beginning, it was not like that. In the beginning, I think, I, I think we, are, we are flowing into it now. You know, before when I say 10 people, people would be shocked. But now 10 is small. I should have said 35. In the beginning, this fashion of humanity that you are seeing now is absolutely not what God intended in the beginning. In the beginning, God intended that man will walk in the perfect state of love. Man will walk in the perfect state of joy. That man will have rulership and dominion in every circumstance, in every sphere. So Bible says that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The nature of sin was imputed into us by Adam when he fell. Like I said, the nature of having two legs was imputed into us by Adam. True or true? So if you are called a man, you have two legs instead of four. You have two hands. You have two eyes. That nature is a physical nature that we acquired from the original man. So a man that is born into this world original or automatically acquired the nature of sin, the DNA of sin, all of us sinned, fell short of the glory of God. And because sin had consequences, the consequences of sin followed humanity. Man was no longer in charge of his space. Man was no longer in charge of his atmosphere. Was no longer in charge of expressing himself. So you will see a woman, I read that very sad story, abroad, somewhere abroad, that drowned her children. And they asked her what happened. She was okay, normal, nothing happened to her. She has never seen a psychiatrist before. But she said she heard the voice, drown these children, drown these children, drown these children. That was not the original intent of God for man. That is a consequence of the fallen nature of man. Man had rulership, had authority over powers of darkness, over situations and circumstances. No demon could tell a woman to drown her children. No demon in the pit of hell could ever have done that. But now we are in this state. But thank God 2,000 years ago, something happened. The Bible says just like the DNA of sin was acquired by man and all men fell. He said because one man decided to be obedient, we acquired the DNA of righteousness. Somebody should shout a big hallelujah there. Shout a resounding hallelujah. So even though you were born acquiring the DNA of sin and the fallen state of man, but as Jesus Christ came on the scene, he brought an option. It's an option for you to acquire the DNA of righteousness. And righteousness has its consequences. And some of the consequences of righteousness is dominion, is rulership, is authority, is power. Is having authority over situations and circumstances of life. Just like Jesus had. 
You will see Jesus walking on water. You will see Jesus rebuking the storm. You will see him healing the sick. That is the opportunity that Jesus has placed before you and I. Just like we have two ends, because we inherited that from the DNA, we can inherit the DNA of rulership and dominion from Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we say that that is the opportunity why we have the opportunity to rule in our lives this season. Because you have become a new person. Somebody shout at me, a new person. So old you was a Nokia 3310. The new you is iPhone Pro Max 14. That's the latest, Abby. Or one has come after that. That's the new you. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. So even though the Nokia 3310 is a phone, it has life, but the quality of life is not what the iPhone has. What it can do is not what the iPhone can do. So, even you have the best quality of Nokia 310. Very solid. But it cannot do what iPhone can do. The life that we have in Christ now is an opportunity to excel in life. And we said we are redeemed. That Jesus Christ paid the price for us. That we and no longer slaves to the devil. We have become slaves to who? The Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we call him our Lord. Our Lord is the owner. He owns us. But the Lord did not stop at owning us. He adopted us as sons and daughters of the Most High God. If you believe that, your amen will be very loud. So in the first service this morning, we started by saying that the other reason why we have rulership and dominion in life now as Christians, if you are not a Christian, you need to become a Christian first to partake of this dimension of glory that I'm talking about. Is that we have access. Somebody shout, I have access. We have access to the throne of grace. We have access to the Lord of Lords. We have access to the to he that created the heavens and the earth. We have access to the I am that I am. In the Old Testament, they didn't have that privilege of having the access that we have now. In the Old Testament, the high priest had access to the throne of grace once in a year. Once in a year. And that was after he has confessed all his sins, he has cleansed himself, he can now go cautiously with a rope tied on his leg to the presence of God. If he forgets to confess any of his sins, he's going to drop dead and die in the presence of God. And then we use the rope to pull him out. That was how difficult it was. In the Old Testament, whenever you saw Yahweh in the Old Testament, Yahweh, the name of God, the scribes that wrote the Old Testament and wrote Yahweh, what they did was that when they get to the place they are going to write Yahweh, they put their pen down first, go into the bathroom, have their bath, ceremonial bath, and confess all their sins so that they can come and write his name. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. Not even uh, pray, write his name, Yahweh. To write Yahweh. Because if you forget to and write the name Yahweh, one of my, not you, that person, that scribe is going to die there. So you remember when they were carrying the Ark of the Covenant? And what's was the name of that guy? Uzzah. He said, hey, let me help God. Don't fall, God, don't follow what happened to him. So even though people desired the presence of God, you have to come to the presence of God cautiously. Why? The nature of God was so different from the nature of man. God was a holy, or God is a holy person. He is so pure and righteous, he cannot behold an iota of iniquity. So whenever somebody comes into his presence with one dot of iniquity, that person was condemned to death. But when Jesus went to the cross of Calvary, something happened. The Bible says the veil that divided the holiest of holy, the holy of holies from the holy place was torn from top to bottom. So henceforth, anyone that have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior had unhindered access to the throne of grace. Somebody shout, I have unhindered access. You know, I was telling somebody, I said, when you have, what, I saw somebody 
just now, you just passed one exam. I said, ah, you have not, it seems you are just together, together. In those days, when you pass that exam, ah, <laughs> everybody will know. You know, I was in, when I was in the university, I passed one exam, the exam that I used to cross from UI to usage. One day I was just going, somebody said, ah, congratulations. I said, what happened? He said, you passed this. I said, how do you know? He said, five, five, three, six, four. He said, how do you know my mic number? He said, I've been watching you. It was a sensation for you to pass that exam. Sensation. People were watching you that, ah, this guy, the way he's reading, is he going to pass or fail? So, but sometimes when something comes easy, you don't appreciate it. Just is one of those things now. All of us gathered here now. Ah, celebrating the goodness of God. All of you looking, pam, 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 taking pictures. Hey, IG, ah, looking good. Sir, so you're looking good in the presence of God. Ma, you're looking good in the presence of God. Ah, in those days, it wasn't like this. Oh. They will put a fence, their blood. You will bath yourself in blood. Ah, show this here. Confess your sin. In fact, even if you do not sin, if you're a woman and you're in your period, you can't come into the presence of God. Can't come. If you just buried somebody, you can't come into the presence of God. So the presence of God was so much guarded then. To me, it seems that people appreciated it. But now, we have 24-7 access to the throne of grace. I don't know of any other generation that is more privileged than you and I. And that was why Paul was saying that those things that the prophets were prophesying that they imagined is now our reality that we are living now. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. The first day I went to church, I gave my heart to Christ July 1998. 25 years ago, I went to church. I was crying. Eh? This is how the presence of God is. Ah, me, where I'm coming from, it's not like that. You have to wash your hand and wash your face and wash your leg before you can come to the presence of God. And if you are in the presence of God for whatever reason, pardon me, it doesn't look clean, and you flatulate, you know what is flatulence? You can explain. That, that means that prayer is spoiled. You have to go back and wash again. That was where I was coming from. And I came here that we just say, Father Lord, I bless you. I give you praise and glory. I worship you. See how Brother Bolu just keyed us into the presence of God, free of charge, FOC. Everybody saying, hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But the price was paid for it. The price was the blood of Jesus. The price was the cross that he went to. The access that we have. If I were you, any man that does not understand the dynamics of the access, the presence of God, is changing himself as a Christian. Every opportunity. You don't even need to come to church. In your house, go to the closet. Five minutes, come out. Not prayer time. Just, you know, when you, when you like something, just peep into it. Say, Father Lord, I just love you. I worship you. I give you praise and glory. This opportunity, just say, I, dare, I love you, Daddy. Five minutes here, come out. In your office, time for toilet. Access. You don't need spiritual cleansing again to come to the presence of God. You don't need to bathe yourself in blood of the lamb to come to. The blood was shed once and for all for you to have access. Somebody say, I have access. Somebody shout, I have access. Shout it out, I have access. I have access through his blood. The other thing that has happened to us is that we have been repositioned in the spirit realm. When God created man, God created man to be a little bit lower than himself. We read that Psalm 8 verse 1 to 4 or 1 to 8. Psalm chapter 8, 1, 1 to 8. New Living Translation. Can we read out loud together? One to go. Amen, amen. We are not reading it out loud. One to go. Read it out loud together. Your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. You have taught children and infants to tell of your strength, silencing your enemies and all who oppose you. When I look at the night sky and the see the work of your finger, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them? Human beings that you should care for. Wait, wait, wait. You know what, what this psalmist was saying? He said, when I look at the majesty of the moon, I look at the 
glory of the stars and the arrangements of the galaxies. I begin to wonder why God's so much interested in man. It looks man like man looks ordinary, let me use that word, compared to the stars and the galaxies. So what is about this man? What exactly, why do you have interest in this man? That you are so mindful. Somebody say, God's mind is full of me. You are so mindful of this man. You are so detailed about this man. You are so in intentional about this man. You know what scientists said? They said the brain of a man and the brain of one single man, the neural connections in the brain of one single man is more than the connections of the, all the computers in the world put together. One, one man. One man. For those people that have studied the human body, the human body is so complex, it's so detailed, it's organized, it's so structured. For a muscle to move, the, the movement of ions, the movement of you know, things, action potential being generated, several things happening just for one movement to happen. What is about this man? Ask your neighbor what is about yourself. Why? Why? That God is so mindful of you. God is so interested in you. When you made a mistake, God covered you up. When you ran away, God brought his son to die. What is it about you? You, this man, what is about you? Kilo day that he engraving you on the palm of his hand. What? Why? You, not only you. Tell your neighbor, not only you. Why is God so mindful of this man? When you look at the galaxies, you look at the moon, you look at the stars, you see the majesty of the creation of God. Well, God is so intentional about this man. He just kept him in a special place. So what are mere mortals that you should think about them? Human beings that you should care for them. Yet, you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. I thought somebody would be excited about that. He made man just a little bit lower than himself. A little bit lower. If you read the old King James, he said, a little bit lower than the angels. But that angel is Elohim, which is used to describe God. So God created a man a little bit lower than himself and put him in the garden and gave him authority and rulership in the garden. But man lost that place. Even after man lost that place, God sent his only begotten son. God sent him. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. Falling short. But the gift of God God is what? Eternal life through Christ Jesus. He by one man's offense, then death reign through all. By one man's obedience, people reign through Christ. What is it about this man? Just a little lower than the angels. So what happened was man was restored spiritually to his spiritual positioning in the spirit. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 8 to 22. Ephesians 1, 8 to 22. So, New King James he said 18 to 22, rather. Ephesians 1, 18. He said, At the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to you, this man, this man again, who believe according to working of his power, which he worked in Christ. So the power that raised Christ, walked in Christ, raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand where, church, I want you to follow me. Where is Jesus Christ seated? Next verse. Far above principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. So let me ask you this question. Where is Jesus Christ seated? Eh? At the right hand of God. Far above. Is he above principalities? Somebody shout what? I know some of you were in first service, so you have the origin. You have the origin. So Jesus Christ is not above principalities and powers. 
The Bible is very intentional. That far is what an adjective would be. And it's very crucial. Because Jesus Christ is now seated far above all principalities, all powers, all rulers of darkness of this age. In the spirit realm that is ranking. Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Hmm? So, they are ranking the spirits. And the spirit realm is so structured and organized that they do not break their ranks. They understand what is happening. So if a man appears and is highly ranked, they know. So when Jesus appeared on the scene, those demons knew that this one was a highly ranked person. They knew. They don't joke with him. If I, sometimes he would just be going, they will be tormented already without him saying anything. So Jesus Christ was raised by the power of God to be seated far above principalities and powers and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the ages to come. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4. To six. He said, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. He said, and raised us up together and made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ. How many of you understand English in this place? What does together mean? It means together. Abby, together means together. So if we were raised together with Christ and we are seated together with Christ, where am I seated? No, somebody shout it out loud. Oh, you, I think you didn't, the first service people got this better. Where are you seated now? You see, they're far above all principalities and powers. Can you give God a praise? See, they're far above. You see, the example I gave in the first service is army ranking, probably because I went to a command school. So I know about a little bit about ranking. So if you say somebody is a major general in the Nigerian army, <laughs> you see, from a particular grade, they wear this red neck. Any man that you see, any military man you see wearing red neck. I think from Brigadier that wear red neck. Eh? Colonel, 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 wear, Colonel and above, they wear that red neck. That red neck is very high ranking officer. Very high ranking. So if you say somebody is a major general in the Nigerian army, that means very well ranked. So a major general and a brigadier, is the major general far above the brigadier? Church? Or is above? Is a major general far above a sergeant? Somebody say, ah, I should have said captain, sir. I intentionally say that. Is he far above a lance corporal? Somebody say, So they are not mates. In, the, in fact, it would take, I'm not sure it's even possible that somebody that is a lance corporal in the Nigerian army can eventually become a major general. I don't think it's possible. Not possible. So if you are a major general in the Nigerian army, you cannot marry somebody that is lance corporal. So you, you know those dynamics. You don't know it. Because they are, they are not counted as mates. They are not mates. They are not mates. You can't cross. Like um, Abraham was telling that guy, the rich guy, he said, there is a gulf. There is a gulf divide. And that was why God intentionally put that far instead of above. Because if it's an above, a, a, a colonel can still say, okay, I don't worry, you are posing for me now. In a few years, me too, I'll become a major general. But a lance corporal, there is nothing he has that he can use to post to a major general. They are not mates. They are not. He can't even begin to imagine. They are not. You're asking, that major general has to really to be humble. To have the spirit of God, humility to even take notice of that lance corporal. And that is where we are compared to the powers of darkness. That is where we are compared to the powers of darkness. Give me Psalms 47, verse 20. Psalm 47, verse 20. Forty-seven, verse 20. Psalm 47 doesn't have verse 20. 
Okay, where, the, where did the Bible say that um, a man that is in honor and knoweth it not is like a beast that perishes? 49 verse 20. 49 verse 20. A man who is in honor yet does not understand is like the beast that perishes. So a man can be a major general, but he doesn't understand the dynamics of the military. And so one little corporal can be harassing him. And that's what happens to many Christians. That a little demon will be harassing Christians because we do not understand the dynamics of the spirit. We leave, you see this repositioning that I said took place was in the spirit realm, not in the physical. So in the physical, the demon can still move things, can do things, harass you, do several things, say your business will not prosper, uh, you will not do this, your marriage is going to break, you are going to do, 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 do this. But as long as you permit that demon to continue in that line, that person, not you, tell your neighbor, not you. It's like this man that is the honor does not understand the honor that he has. So we have been repositioned to stand far above principalities and powers and every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the ages to come. We are field marshals in the spirit realm. However, many of us do not walk to the full extent, potential of that, our place and position in the spirit realm. The other thing that has happened to us is that we have been made righteous. Second Corinthians chapter 5.21 we have been made righteous. That he that knew no sin became sin for us that will become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So what happened was that the nature of sin was put on, upon Jesus as a substitutional reaction. You remember, how many of you remember simultaneous equation in secondary school? You remember, if you remember, lift up your hand now. So some of you did not do simultaneous sins. What kind of equation did you do? Quadratic equation. Or oh, you didn't even do any equation in secondary school. Uh, for, um, where, Pastor K, next, next week Sunday, everybody that wants to enter this will bring the school starts. We are going to set up a committee and begin to investigate how you finish secondary school without knowing simultaneous equation. So in simultaneous equation, they will say something 2x plus y is equal to 4. And the other one will now say x squared plus y is equal to 3. So you now say 2x, 2x is equal to 4 minus y. x is equal to 4 minus y over 2. Abby, why are you looking at me like he's... Uh, it, seems, it seems you are going to do this thing seriously. That one is a simple equation, Abby. Simon says, ah, ah, God have mercy upon you. I'm tempted to say we should check our school sats. I know that people of God will not have um, original school sats. Now have forged documents. Eh? Some of you was by the grace of God that you passed mathematics. Mercy just showed up that day. Your brain just opened his head. Your hand was just like X plus Y is equal to. Um, okay, let me just give him that. Let's just go. So, but that's what they do in simultaneous equations. You now see two, the X is equal to Y minus four over two. So wherever you see X, instead of using X, you put Y minus four over two. It's substitution. That's how equations are resolved. So in this substitution, what happened is that whenever you saw Tony, you replaced Tony with Jesus. That's how the equation of my own life was resolved. So whenever you saw Jesus, you put Tony in there. So when Tony was supposed to be killed for his sins, Jesus Christ was killed because X is now uh, Y minus 4 over 2. So whenever is due for towing. Any wrong thing that was due for towing went on Jesus. So, one of the punishments of sin was sickness. You know what Jesus Christ did? He offered his body. So, the punishment for my sickness was upon him. That was why 1 Peter 2, 4, 24 says, he himself uh, took bore our sins on his own body. Eh? That by his stripes we were healed. Something is missing in that equation. That he himself bore our sins on his own body, that we being dead to sin, we live to righteousness. By whose stripes ye were healed. So, whenever God sees Tony now, 
He doesn't really see me. He sees who? Answer me, he sees who? So because for you to come, we're talking about access. For you to come to the presence of God, the Almighty, God is not just almighty and omnipotent and all-powerful and omniscient. He is also holy and pure. So, and God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He will not, and he cannot. He doesn't have the capacity to tolerate sin. He doesn't. He cannot. He cannot. Whether in the Old Testament or the New Testament, he cannot. So what God did was that God used the substitutional reaction. Because he knows that anytime this doing is coming before his presence, God will now remember that yesterday I was thinking about somebody that offended me and I would not be able to come into his presence. He said, look, let us do something substitutional. All of towing sins, let me put it on my son. And all of my son's righteousness, let me put it on my um, towing. So whenever I am coming to the presence of God now, God does not see me as towing. He sees Jesus Christ in me. Are you following me, this church? You are not following me. If you are following me, you will be excited at that point. So righteousness is quite different, a little bit different from holiness. Holiness is purity. It's purity in your thoughts, purity in your actions, purity in your words, and purity in your intentions. That's holiness. Righteousness means to have the right to stand boldly without any sense of guilt or condemnation. Let me give you this example. Do we have any lawyer? I know that um, uh, barista is not that. Any lawyer in this? Call to bar. Somebody call to bar in the church. Just lift up your hand. I just want to. Somebody call to bar. You see, as you see me, I am a very, by the grace of God, I am a very well-educated person. Very well, very vastly read. And I'm saying that openly. Very educated. But because I am very educated, I don't have the right standing to stand before a judge in this country. Brother, how many years of experience do you have? Seven years. Eh? Me, I have about almost 30 years of experience as a medical person. So you will see, ah, this man is, ah, ah. When I get to a judge, I have no right standing. Is it because I'm a bad person? Eh? Because I'm not educated? Why do I have not a right standing before the judge? I don't recognize that's not what gives you access to right standing. What gives you right access to right standing before a judge in Nigeria is that you're a lawyer and you're called to bar. So if this brother probably it just even let's say one year experience, he's, he has better right standing before the judge than myself. That's right standing. Let me give you an example. How many of you have the children here? So your child, you told him, I'm going out now. Don't watch cartoons. Say, mommy, ah, no, 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 no cartoon. I'm going to read my book. I'm going to read my book. In fact, we have exam two weeks' time. Mommy, I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading. No cartoon. But your son doesn't know that you have um, DSTV. Uh, you have CCTV. And you're seeing him from your phone, in your office. This guy has watched like 25 series of cartoon. And you are so hungry. Ha, ha, ha. Shegun. Oh, oh. You have an exam two weeks' time. You are saying it on your phone. You, can't, you are so angry. You have got to say, Son, did you watch cartoon? Me, cartoon? Never. Coward. I was reading. I read. In fact, if they bring the exam now, I will score A through. But the guy was watching cartoon. Now you saw him. And there is somebody on the street. Total garden here. The guy is hard working. The guy is brilliant. And he doesn't have school fees. And he's cleaning your window. <laughs> mommy, just give me 1,000 naira. You know, mommy, how many mommies there? If you are a mommy, I shout a big amen. Mommy, if God touches your heart and you are very kind, you know what you do? You will give that guy 500 naira. If you give him 1,000 naira, the guy will take off. You will think you want to use him for a ritual. But this is your son that's been watching DSTV. The school fees is 150,000 naira. You won't even bat an eye to pay that school fees. Why? The guy has right standing with you. This guy that is cleaning, even if you are very merciful, the next day, he now comes and says, 
Mommy, I mean, I'm buying a window in Lano, in your house. What will you do? Ah. In fact, the gate man would not allow him to come in. But your son will come back from school. He has disobeyed you. Come, uh, uh. The gate man, uh, in fact, the gate man will want to collect his bag. Why? That is what we call right standing. Right standing is the fact that you have the right to stand before God. You see, let me explain this dynamics. Let us understand. This morning is for understanding. And that's why we showed that 49 verse 20. Understand the dynamics of the spirit. You need right standing mainly before God. Mainly before God. You need holiness before men. Supposing I tell you now that, ah, hmm, you know what happened to me? Oh? I went to a supermarket one day and I was tempted. Let me confess my sin. And as I just got to a place that was no CCV, I just took some provisions and put it in my pocket. He said, eh, Pastor, you did that? Pastor. I said, I've confessed before God and he has forgiven me. He said, ah, okay, Pastor, I forgive you. I forgive since God has forgiven you. Six months after, I tell you, sir, sir, what is the Then what shell again? I say, ah, it has happened. I went to another supermarket. I was tempted again and I stole something from that supermarket. I said, ah, I say, Pastor, here never loaded by. Are you following me, church? But that same me, if I go back to the throne of grace, you know, the Bible says he's rich in mercy. He say, Father, Lord, forgive me, cleanse me. You know, he will forgive me. But this daddy already has the impression about this pastor. Two times now, we say, ah, you know, we are all flesh, we can fall, we can fall. Six months after, I said, ah, uncle, what is it, Shalel? Say, ah, what happened? They get, what happened? How would you say, ah, hey, I don't know, is the devil, though? Hmm, this devil is very powerful, though. I went again, and I stole in that supermarket. He said, ah. You know, even though this man loves me so much, he has been praying for me that that would not happen. The next time I come to his house, say, ah, I just came to visit you. And he has, God has blessed him. Somebody just sent $15,000. And he put the dollars somewhere on his table. And he heard that. This, hey, yeah, what's in book? Eh? Eba, I told you, please keep the money. Keep the money. He won't have the confidence in me, no matter how much he tried. So that is why God wants us to be pure before men. Because even though God is rich in mercy, men are not rich in mercy. Men can be merciful, but men are not rich in mercy. But this is the dynamics. Let me tell you something. I need like four. Please come. You are wearing white, so please come. Please come, sir. This man that is wearing, follow me. You are wearing white. Go and stay there. At that, sister, you come. You stay here. Sister, you stay here. So, this is the perfect will of God for us. This is Jesus. You not only have a right standing with the Father, he's holy. Holy means he's pure in his thoughts, he's pure in his actions, he's pure in his words, and he's pure in his intentions. Not only that, he has the fullness of the character of God, the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. And he has the power of God. This is Jesus. So the perfect will, listen to this very well. Listen to this. Once you give your heart to Christ, the reason why we remain on this earth for 50 years after, 70 years after, 80 years after, are just for two, two reasons. Number one reason is that eventually in your life, you become like this man. That is number one reason why we are alive. So if you are living for 70 years after, because if you go now, you go and meet Jesus. But for you to be alive here, God is giving you time to become like Jesus. And number two is to tell other people about Jesus Christ. Two reasons. Win souls for Christ and to be like Jesus. But that is a problem. Somebody said that is a problem. Tell your neighbor that is a problem. You know the problem? In the New Testament Christianity, the standard, the bar was raised. In the Old Testament, the definition of fornication and adultery was that if you, are, you sleep with a woman or a man that is not your husband, you have committed adultery. That's the Old Testament definition. In the New Testament, 
if you look at a woman that is not your wife lustfully, what's he commit adultery? Somebody say, ah, that is when you live. Pito for the woman. If you just look at a man that is not your husband, you have looked at him lustfully. Okay? Adultery. In the Old Testament, if you have an enemy, you are commanded to love your enemy and love your neighbor and love your friends and hate your enemies. In the New Testament, you must love your enemy. So if you don't love your enemy, sin. In the Old Testament, if you kill somebody as mother, in the New Testament, you buy the New Testament you say, oh, shit. You are danger of God. Idiots. So what that did for us, that all of us, what can be done now? And unfortunately, we are sick as our target. If you are following me, you can look at the leader and the lawyer. But God himself will not do something for you because you want to do it. You can do what God did. Work the factors of the situation. Work the factor of mercy. What factor of grace? You know what faith does for you? When you fall short of the glory of God, instead of you to receive punishment, mercy will speak. For instance, if you commit adultery, you want to be killed to stone you. But mercy will say no. You know why mercy is covering you? Not because mercy is invested in sin. No, 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 no. no. The reason why mercy is covering you is that you can be wrong to know to do that Because if it's that criteria, I suspect that most men in this country have been dead by now. I suspect, I'm not so sure. Most, most people have looked at women that are not their wives, but most, I will say all, because I'm not poor, I suspect so. But mercy will say, oh, no, 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 don't die. intention of mercy is that you can have sufficient time to correct yourself and correct yourself and to become more and more and more and more. Okay. Are you following me? If you are following me, you shall be doing hallelujah again. But mercy is good, but it was not only mercy that God is to do. You know what God is to do today? Grace. What is grace? Grace is God empowering you in the place of your weakness. So Paul said, in my weakness, your strength is made perfect. So you have this weakness. You are always looking at all women lost. But grace will walk in you. The Bible says it teaches us to live a holy life. Let me give you an example. Somebody told me one day, say, ah, Dr. Lawa. He said, I, I'm, I'm very smart now. I said, what happened to you? He said, ah, one day I was just look, I was just going in this Ibadan. And I started seeing that. Ah, he said, Doctor, Nigerian women are very beautiful. Though. I said, hey, how do you mean? He said, ah, I was just seeing beautiful women, beautiful women, beautiful women, beautiful women, beautiful women. Beautiful women. I said, ah, but you are married. He said, I know that I'm married. But they were just, all of them were just looking beautiful now. Can you appreciate our women in Nigeria, Ibadan? But you know, the beautiful he was talking was not the ordinary beautiful. It was not the platonically beautiful. I didn't know where he was going. He said, ah. He said, when I now got to him, I said, ah. You see, he said, if, if, if I was not a Christian, I'm going to marry. I can't marry five wives, though. I said, why? Well, he said, I'll marry like 50. Because all, all the women are just beautiful. They're just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. He said, ah, I now realize that that's the reason God said we should marry just one. Because if, for me, if I marry, if I want to be marrying beautiful women, and tomorrow I will not see another beautiful one. I will not see another beautiful one. And I, said, ah, I have decided that when I see beautiful one, I just won't hide like this to look at her mm, and go my own way. And go and look at my beautiful wife. What was happening? Grace was teaching him how to walk in the holiness. That was the revelation that gave, gave, grace gave him so that he'll be focused on his wife and he'll be faithful to his wife. Somebody shout a big amen. So in the place of your weakness, grace can make you strong. But I still have another problem. Open Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 to me. So what is our aim? Eh? To be like this man. Who is going to help us Mercy and grace. But where do you find mercy and grace? See now, Hebrews, can you read it out loud?
So where do you find mercy and grace? In the presence of God. That is how you find, that is where you find mercy and grace. You find mercy and grace in the presence, even though mercy and grace personified is Jesus Christ. But the, the reality, the tangibility of mercy and grace, you find when you come, not just come, you specify when you come boldly. Somebody shout boldly. The only reason why you can come boldly to the throne of grace if you have this sense of righteousness. If you come in your holiness, you will never be able to. If you, are, if you believe me, shout a big hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. So I have righteousness. I am righteous because of what Jesus Christ did. But my aim is to be like Jesus in holiness and in power and character. So what I do is that because I know that I'm righteous, I can come boldly to the throne of grace. In the place of prayer. You see, we change ourselves when you feel that you come to prayer just to receive from something from God. It's one over 50 of what happens in prayer. One of the things that happen in the place of prayer is that you obtain mercy and you find grace to help. To help you. So where you have been struggling before, you find grace. Where judgment was supposed to come upon you, mercy will speak for you by the blood of Jesus. And as you begin to come continually and you find grace and you find help, so I'll be walking now and trying to be like Jesus, I will fall. Instead of me to die and stay there, mercy will pick me up, grace will strengthen me to go move on. And I fall again, mercy will pick me up, grace will strengthen me. And I continue to go. And I appreciate God as I'm continuing that journey, I'm falling and I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. But because grace gives me strength, it's pulling me up. Say no, don't be tired. You can get there. You will get there. <laughs> you are strengthened on your inner man. By the grace of God, I will get there. I will get there. And I become more and more and more like Jesus. Many times, most of us that continue in that journey for a long time, we get to the edge, to the precipice of being like Jesus. Some people have testified. Can it again went for 40, 50 years without having an headache. So he was on the precipice. He will see things in the spirit realm as tangible as you are seeing them in the physical realm. One day, they told, they said one woman lost her child, was missing. And she went to, he went to console the woman that, sorry, we know we'll find the child. We know, as he was consoling the child, he just saw himself in the spirit. He saw the train station where that lady entered. And he told the woman, sorry, your child is coming back. She went so, so, and so, and so, please. In reality. So he was on the precipice of being like Jesus. But he got there not because he was a good man. It was because he allowed mercy and grace to help him on that journey. How far he went, we do not know. But we know he was very close. You and I may not be as close as we may be here, but don't give up. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. As we continually come boldly to the throne of grace, you'll find grace to help. You'll find mercy in his presence. And you'll continue on that journey and continue on that journey and continue on that journey until you become more and more like Jesus in character and power. And you know what that does for you? When you become more and more like Jesus in character and power, when the storms of life come, because, you know, storms were not available then because there was only one kingdom ruling on earth in the days of Adam, the kingdom of God. Now we have the kingdom of darkness, we have the kingdom of light. So if the kingdom of darkness wants to invade your space, you will do what I say? Peace, be still. Peace, be still. You command that devil and task to obey you because you are ranking like Jesus in the spiritual. If you do not have a place, a regular place, to come into boldly to the truth of grace, you are allowing the devil to cheat you of your spiritual essence in Christ Jesus. Because that is where you do what? Find mercy and find grace to help in your time of need. And our time of needs always comes. Prayer is the key, not only to answered prayers, Prayer is the key to transformed lives. Because you come, you are transformed day by day into the image of Christ. That's what righteousness does for you. Can we appreciate them? God bless you. Let us read Romans chapter 8 from verse 1 to 3 as we begin to round up this morning. 
This is one of my favorite scriptures in this Bible. Let me say before I read this. As a Christian, you need a regular place to interface with the Spirit of God to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in your time of need. You need that sense, that understanding, revelation of who you are in the spiritual. And that understanding, one of the ways you get it at, don't be far away from 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Romans, um, Ephesians, and Colossians. Those five books of the Bible. Let it be your daily bread. Be close to those scriptures. It says, therefore, there is therefore now condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. We do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin. You see, the strategy of the devil is condemnation. Let me tell you something that happened to me many years ago. Um, we're young. One of our friends just gave birth to a baby. So we went for the naming in the morning. I was going to the office. Then I used to hang my word coats in my car. So I was trying to turn back on one main road. And one guy just looked into my car and he saw that I was what coat. He said, ah, doctor, you want to turn back? I said, yes. He said, ah, oh, no one there, oh, no one that is that you can turn back, you can turn back. So, confidently, I took that route. The next thing I saw was that that same guy that said, you can turn back, entered my car. And said, this is an illegal turning. This is an illegal turning. In the Ibadoyel. I said, why? But you told me now. He said, it doesn't matter. You have to go to our office. I, I was tempted to drive him all the way. But the guy was struggling. He knew what I wanted to do, actually was struggling with the steering. I said, don't let me cause accident here. So we went to there. Yeah, I got there. I said, ah, Ponto is tired. You're going to pay one big money then. One big money that I had to pay. So I paid for that. It was actually an illegal. I found that it was legal to take that place. But who encouraged me to take that out? And who brought the justice? The guy and his court. That is the strategy of the devil. It doesn't matter, George. Ah, it doesn't matter. Just take that out. Abuse that person. Ah, don't man, sleep. Don't fast. There is no need for prayer. Ah, no, no prayer. Mm. It's the pastors and the pastors and prophets that need prayer. You don't need for prayer. You don't need to study. Ah, just do it. Just do it. Ah, you should be a man. You're a man. Don't worry if you sleep with any lady. Ah, just sleep with all those temptations. But you know the person that will condemn you. Eh? It's the devil himself. I will tell you when you are praying that you cannot, God, God will answer you, somebody like you. <laughs> Even the prophets, they are praying 21 days before God answers them. You are praying 10 minutes, God will not answer your prayer. He will not answer your prayer. You better confess, you now see people, somebody praying, say, ah, Father Lord, all my sins. It's in primary school. Ah, even the one that was seen in my mother's womb. Well, God, forgive me. Let us pray. God, cleanse us of all our sins. We are all sinners. That is the condemnation of the devil. It will tempt you and condemn you. God does not condemn. What God wants is what? Repentance. Change your heart and change your ways. So in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. There is no condemnation. God does not encourage wrongdoing. But he says, if you have done wrong... Confess your sin and receive the mercy of God. And come boldly to his throne. You see, the key that I'm saying here is that we should come boldly. There is no way you'll be transformed without having regular coming boldly to the throne of grace. That is the secret. And that is the secret of prayer that people don't know. That you should always come in boldly. What you are doing now or who you are now is not the most important thing. The most important thing is who you become in the future. And that is determined by your interface, the rubbing off of God upon your life. Because by ourselves, nobody, nobody has that, uh, what do you call it? That holiness to come before the throne of grace. And as you begin to come with that condemnation, 
You see, at a particular time, some things will not just be, you will not be interested in some things again. So I'll just be excited. Sometimes people are arguing about alcohol. I wonder why they are arguing about alcohol. You are the ones that used to take alcohol now. People, people, people think that they are guys, Christians. We are the ones that used to take alcohol. I'm not condemning anybody, but I, I just, I, I, I'm not, I can't crave for it. If I try to crave, I can't. Because I knew those days that, you know, guys, was good that whole bottle of Buddha before I gave my heart to Christ. Oh, you're looking at, but this Buddha is looking like the eh, pastor. Wah. Eh? That was on the sitting, eight bottles is gone. Pam. But I can't, it doesn't even interest me. Some of those things are just not exciting. The taste of it is not exciting. It's not exciting. It's not because, it's not because it just um, somebody preached to me that if you drink Gulda, you will go into hellfire. No. It was because after interfacing with God severally, some things will not be so. So when they're arguing, I'm, I'm not even involved in the argument. Uh, of course, you know, Gulda will not take you to hell. It's not accepting Jesus that will take you to hell, but I'm not saying, eh, okay. Ah. And move on. Tell your neighbor, move on. Lift up your hands towards them. Father, Lord, we bless you, Lord Jesus, for the gift of righteousness. That we can come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in our time of need. Thank you, Lord. No man, no matter who you are, you can't, you don't have that ability to come before God. If you have given one million naira as tithe, 20 million as offering, you don't have that, it doesn't qualify you. That, ah, I've got pass on me. I have been married for 21 years. I've not committed fornication. Mm -mm. That is not the qualification. The qualification is that you have a right standing before God. And the only way you have a right standing before God is because you are a child of God. I am a son of God. I am a daughter of the Most High God. If there is somebody under the sound of my voice, you cannot confidently call yourself the son or the daughter of God. Ah, God have mercy. Mercy is available now. Can we bow our heads and close our eyes? I cannot boldly call myself the son of God. I am not so sure I am righteous. I cannot boldly come before this God. If judgment should come now, I cannot call upon the blood of Jesus. I want to give my heart to Christ. I want my soul to be saved. I want to become a son of the most high God, to be able to come boldly to the throne of grace. I don't want judgment to come upon me. I don't want God to see me the way I am or who I am. I want God to see me, to see Christ in me, to see Jesus in me. If you are that person I'm talking about, can you just lift up your hands? Let me recognize you. Let me see you. Wherever you are, all eyes closed, all head bowed. Anybody like that, just lift up your hands. Let us recognize you. This is a big opportunity. That is the coco, the miracle of salvation. So, Father, Lord, we bless you and give you praise and glory. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your glory in our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you put your hands together for the Lord and give him praise? Clap your hands and put your hands together for the Lord. Thank you for watching this video. We do appreciate you. If you are yet to subscribe to this channel, kindly do so by clicking the subscribe button so that you get updated whenever we post more edifying content on this channel. Once again, we appreciate you. Thank you and God bless you.